Hi, welcome back to Midnight Tutor. We've got another problem for you and we want to go ahead and demonstrate that problem. The problem is a follow-on to something we saw just a last segment and that is given that lowercase f at x is equal to the ln of x minus 2, what we want to do now is find the area under the curve between x equals 3 and x equals 5 inclusively using the average of the upper value and the lower value sum and divide this interval into four separate parts. So the first approach we're going to take for this is using a Riemann sum. And let's go over that and so we can understand what's going on. All we do in a Riemann sum is we break up our domain for the function. In this case we want to use four equal subintervals. And so I've divided the domain from 3 to 5 into 0.5 increments. And we want to calculate the function for each of those values. So we go from 3, 3.5, 4, four and a half and five. So this is five data points that give us four intervals, one, two, three, and four, and we're going to go ahead using our calculator to find these numbers. So we'll punch in ln of three minus two, which is one, ln of one is zero, ln of 3.5 minus two turns out to be 0.41, and the rest of the numbers we can use our calculator to, de to determine, those numbers are right here. Now the next thing we want to do is plot this out. So I start off on my x-axis at point 3, and my first value is 0, so I plot that point. My next value is 0.41, so 0.41 I plot that value. At 4 it's 0.69, at 4.5 it's 0.92, and finally, at 5, it's 1.1. So this is not to scale. It's just an illustration so I can keep track of my numbers and I can understand what I'm doing. My x-axis interval is 0.5. So 3.5 minus 3 is a 0.5 interval. And I want to find the area under this curve using a summation, a Riemann sum. And I'm going to do so by taking the average of the upper value and the lower value. So what does that look like? Well, my interval here in x is 0.5, so I've got 0.5 here. And then I want to take the average of 0 and 0.41. So I have 0 plus 0.41, and I divide by 2. And so I'm going to calculate that number and go to the next interval. The next interval says the lower value is 0.41, the upper value is 0.69. So I'm taking the average. And so in this case, the first average was right here. The second average will be right here, and then the third average will be about here, and finally the fourth average will be somewhere in this vicinity. I'm going to take the summation of those four terms, and when I do so, using a hand calculator, I find that the sum is approximately equal to 1.27. So the area under the curve for this function between x equals 3 and x equals 5 inclusively is approximately equal to 1.27. In the next segment, we're going to use our calculus and graphing techniques to come up with the answer analytically. Okay, now we're going to take a look at part two of this question. Part two says we want to graph this function, and that's lowercase f at x is equal to ln of x minus 2, and we want to find the domain of the function, that is, those values on the x-axis where this function is valid. So what I've done is I've gone ahead and plotted out ln of x. And it's always good to know some of the basic curves and what they look like. That way, when we get a ln of x minus 2, we can make an adjustment to it, but the fundamentals don't change. So if I plot ln of x, there's one point on here that we should always remember. ln of 1 is equal to 0. That is, any variable to the 0th power is always 1. And so we plotted ln of x here, and now we're going to make the adjustment for the fact that this is ln of x minus 2. Well, all ln of x minus 2 does is shift our curve, and I've drawn it in blue here, to the right, two units along the x-axis. So if I now take x minus 2, and I start with a value of, let's say, 2, I get 2 minus, I'm sorry, a value of 3. I get 3 minus 2 is 1, and I can plot that value in. The shape of the curve doesn't change. We're not multiplying by any scaling factors here. And my asymptote for ln of x would be the y-axis, and that is x equals 0. However, in the case of ln of x minus 2, my asymptote here is along x equals 2. 
So I want to keep that in mind. And then I can draw in my curve for ln of x minus 2. So I have a good idea of what we're looking at. We're trying to find the area between x equals 3 and x equals 5 inclusively. And the domain for this function, those values of x where this is valid, is all positive real numbers greater than 2. Because if I have a number less than 2, let's say a number of 1, 1 minus 2 is minus 1, and I can't take the log of that in my negative number. So our domain, we've already found the domain just by graphing this function, and that is all real values for x greater than 2 are valid in this case. So let's go ahead and proceed here. If we want to know the area under this curve, we need to take its integral. And we've done that in a previous segment, and you can refer back to that material. But we integrated ln of x minus 2, lowercase f of x is equal to that. And we've come up with a function, capital F at x. And that function is outlined right here. And so we can see capital F at x is equal to the integral of ln of x minus 2 times dx. And capital F of x is actually equal to x minus 2 times the quantity ln of x minus 2 minus 1. And we're going to evaluate this for limits x equals 3 to x equals 5. So what does this turn out to be? It turns out to be capital F at 5 minus F at 3 is equal to the area under this curve. And what area are we looking at here? We're looking at this area right here. Okay, So we're going to calculate that area analytically. So we take F at 5 and that's in this case because we have x minus 2, 5 minus 2 which is 3, ln of 5 minus 2, ln of 3, and we subtract 1. Now if you use a hand calculator, you'll find that the ln of 3 is 1.1. So when we track, subtract 1 from that, we get 0.1 multiplied by 3, and we get 0.3. The next value we need to calculate is f at 3. 3 minus 2 is 1. ln of 3 minus 2 is ln of 1. We know that ln of 1 in this case is 0. So we have a minus 1 times 1, and that's a minus 1. So the function evaluated at x equals 3 is equal to minus 1. So our area is just 0.3 minus a minus 1, and we get a value of 1.3. Now in a previous segment, we looked at a Riemann sum, and we found for the Riemann sum that this area was approximately equal to 1.27. And so we get good correlation here, because we know a Riemann sum is an approximation. So 1.27 for a four-segment or four-interval sum is pretty close to 1.3, and we can be pretty satisfied with these results.